Shalom. First and foremost, call Loyum, Wakabala, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Arukak, Wadash. Devon to the elder apostles of the great millstone who were well, peace, blessings, and citations unto the four elect tabernacle of David, scattered through all the four corners of the earth. Ain't it a trip when you look at our people, you know, stuck under that, you know, plantation Christian spell? You know, they've been taught or groomed to, you know, misuse scripture. To excuse their willful transgressions. And um, that shows you that that particular religion, Christianity, you know, they taught our people how to fear the Most High through the precepts of men. You know, the, the, the fear of the Most High is taught by the precept of men. This is the reason why they will find every excuse to not keep simple commandments and we know that the scriptures say that his commandments are not grievous but yet in the same breath they'll say they love the most high and they'll say god is love let's get a uh, first john five and three real quick but this is the love of the most high that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous all right, like wearing a beard on your face if you can grow one and not, you know, shaving off your head, you know, bald, you know, if, if your hair doesn't naturally, you know, fall out. That's not that's not hard to do. That's that's pretty simple. All right, it's a, it's a, it's a particular way that he wants his sons to appear because we are made in his likeness and his image. So there's a reason for why he wants a man to look like a man or right, have, have, you know, facial hair. You see, you know, lions, you know, they keep them mean. That's what makes them look like lions. That's what separate them from the, the, the female lions, the lioness. They have their mane. But, uh, you know, too much time under this damn devil, you know. They they uh you know learned his ways. You know the scriptures say, you know, not to envy your or oppressor, man. Neither choose none of his ways. So anyway, let me uh, look up that word grievous, because you're a hypocrite if you claim you know God is love and. You know, you went to this love, lovey-dovey, you know, spirit, but you can't keep simple commandment that he told you to keep. The word is uh, barus. It's barus, and it says heavy in weight, metaphorically burdensome, severe, stern, weighty, of great moment. All right. Basically, it's not a burden. It's not heavy for you to, to rock a beard on your face and keep the hair on your head and not, you know, line it up, you know, mar the corners of your, um, you know, your, your head and, and, and your beard. That, there's, there's nothing burdensome to do. All right. Now, you have them wicked scribes and Pharisees, you know, who's trying to place burdens upon Jake and they themselves couldn't even, you know, hold hold to it. They were being hypocrites, you know, but, you know, there are simple things that you can actually do. All right. It's, it's, it's pretty much. Um, it's, it's something that 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 you can actually keep. All right. But, uh, you know, Jake will find an excuse. These Christians, they'll find an excuse. The same with, with, you know, other laws. You know, they can't put the, the shellfish down. They can't put the, you know, the shrimp, lobster, crab. They can't put the swine down. And that's something that's, you know, pretty simple. All you got to do is have discipline. Which in the New Testament, the scriptures talk about temperance, having uh, self-control. 
but you can't even do simple things, but yet you love the Lord. So, you know, this is what I'm responding to. I'm reacting to this little clip right here. This uh this little uh self-proclaimed pastor, Warren Adams. And it says street pastor preacher Warren responds to black Hebrew Israelites. They gotta throw that black in there. God wants our hearts, not the beard. Or spoken like a true Christian. You know? Well, what do the scriptures say about the heart? First first off. Let's get uh Jeremiah. Is that 17 and uh 9? Yeah, John 17, verse 9. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. All right? And what you know, we, your heart is your mind. All right? The Hebrew word love, which means mind. You go on by your own mind, that's very deceitful. Because there's a scripture in Apocrypha that says many are, are deceived by their vain opinion. And you got a lot of... Uh, unlearned Christians who are deceived by their own vain opinion. All right, leaning upon their own understanding when they read these scriptures. The Lord never done away with these commandments at all. We're just under grace, you know, because, you know, we needed that sacrifice to, to restore us back to the Heavenly Father, to be back in good graces with the Heavenly Father. But do we do away with the law that grace may abound? God forbid. Do we do away with the law um, uh, uh, because of faith? God forbid. We, est we establish the law. So listen to this guy's excuse for, you know, why it, it doesn't matter if you, you know, shave your head bald, if you have a, you rock a baldy, all right, you rock the, uh, you know, the, the, the DMX, you know, the, the Tupac Baldi. Now listen to this guy. There's a life still making complaints. That we should not be wearing no beards or cut our hair. I didn't gave the scripture. That was under the law of Moses. But y'all forget about the prophet Elisha. When the children cursed, uh, they was mocking the prophet Elijah rather because he had a bald head. That's in the Bible. He was a prophet. The Bible said that he cursed the children in the name of the Lord because they were joking on his bald head. And the Bible said that she bears came along and destroyed the children. You know, everybody's not able to grow a beard. Everyone is not able to have what you have. What I love about Jesus is that he judged the heart. Here, here, here it is. Saying all that with Nimrod's rod hanging down from his neck. I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know what that go back to, that, that tie, that necktie. But see how he's using the example of uh, Elisha? Now, he's saying Elijah, but he got it wrong. It was actually Elisha all right, who, who uh, you know, sent that curse up on those, uh, those niggly bears. And, the, you know, when the Lord heard his cry, you know, he, he sent uh, two she-bears and ripped their little asses up. Now let's go to that account. So is this, this does this excuse that you can have a bald head? Because for one, the only way you're actually excused is either your hair naturally fall out, which that's in the law. I'm mean, I'll, I'll grab it, or if you actually break the Nazarite vow. Once you break the Nazarite vow, you have to shave all the hair off your face. Matter of fact, that was a um, that was a vow that uh, Apostle Paul had um, took, and then he had to keep the Passover, so they noticed that he had, you know, he didn't have no hair on his face. All right, but uh, Elisha was was different. His case was totally different. All right, it would have let you know if uh, Elisha actually took that vow. All right, so let's uh, read it real quick. This is uh, 2 Kings 2. 
And I'm going to start at verse um, 23. It says, And when he went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. So forty-two niggly bears got ripped up. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel and from thence he returned to Samaria. Now, I want to look up that word bald head. Go to the Hebrew and see what that say. The word is uh, Quara, and it just says bald. Now, what other uh, text uses this same word, or right, what other passage, or what other scripture, what other precept? If you go down, it gives you the precept, Leviticus 13 verse 40. And what is that dealing with? Let's go to uh, let's go to it. Is Leviticus 13 and 40 it says and the man whose hair is falling off his head meaning you naturally balding he is bald yet he is clean and he that have his hair falling off from the part of his head toward his face he is forehead bald yet is he clean all right the horseshoe um look all right, you naturally bought in like that, you're still clean. So this is an exception. All right. So if you just happen to be bald like that, then hey, you know, this is what you got to deal with. But if you, you can grow a head full of hair, there's no reason why you should be bald. So that means no razors to really come up upon your head. All right. Unless, you know, you, you vow to take that Nazarite vow. And you break it, which every uh, year during the Passover, you got to drink um, your yon. You got to drink the grape. And you you take of anything of the grape, you break the vow. So that's not a good, ex this is not a good excuse. So Elijah would have had to have been a young man whose hair was uh, falling off his head. He was balding, so that's why he was balding. Those children, they didn't have any respect. You know, he was the um, basically the 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 the, the protege to uh, Elijah. All right, and they really didn't respect. They respected Elijah, but they really didn't respect him. They just seen him go up into that whirlwind. But Elisha got a double dose of his spirit. He was a he was a mighty man in in the spirit, a prophet of, of the Lord. So those little nigglets, they had no idea what they was up against, but they had to pay the price. All right, but this more than likely was his uh, situation. This was likely the scenario: his hair was falling off his head, because they never said anything about him taking a Nazarite vow. So this is why you shouldn't lean upon your own understanding. Okay. But, uh, you know, knowing these Christians, you know, they're going to continue to find excuse the same way they find it for, you know, if you want to continue to eat swine, you know, anything the Lord told you unclean, they're going to find an excuse for it and, and, and misuse scripture to do so. Like they're going to, um, when Yahweh Shai said, you know, it's not what go, off, it's not what enter into a man that defile him, but what cometh out of a man. You know, and they misuse that. They don't even understand that scripture. Vocab, he does it all the time, and we've done we've done several breakdowns on that. But you know, he's a devil, you know, so we don't expect him to, you know, get that right. They they also use the um, the vision of Peter that Peter had. You know, those uh the the abominable um you know creeping things that he saw on that sheet knit to the four corners let down to the earth. 
that was the, the uncleanness of Israel. Because Israel was getting ready to be received. They had been cleansed by, by the Lord's sacrifice. All right. So it was it was pretty much he saw food because he was hungry, but it was it was it was a metaphor. It was a representation. For those, you know, Israelites who were being called common by the circumcision, they were getting ready to be received. And that and it was the spirit that the Lord had Peter have that vision, because right after that, he was sent right over to Cornelius, who was an Israelite. So these Christians, they misuse all these scriptures to justify blatant, willful transgression. But yet you love the Most High. No, the, the, the fear of the Most High is taught by the precepts of men. That's your fear of the Lord is taught by the precepts of men. All right, the Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. All right, and that's also, you can find that in the, um, in the Old Testament law as well. Let's go to, uh, what was that, Exodus 20? Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, uh, Exodus 20, verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. All right? And I ain't just talking about the 10. So if you love the Lord, you're going to keep his commandments, man. There ain't no excuses for that. Now, we do all fall short, you know, of the, of the glory. You know, our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's the reason why the Lord had to make a, a, a new covenant based on better promises. Because, you know, we were at fault. We we're in these um, chains of darkness, these sinful bodies. You know, so we can't really help ourselves. We're going to naturally sin in this flesh. But we acknowledge our our offenses and, and we ask for mercy and we try to keep keep these commandments to the best of our ability the ones that we have the the, the power to keep we the ones that you can control the ones that you can actually do you do it there's certain things that you don't have control over you know certain laws that we we can only keep when we're sovereign when we're not up under the jurisdiction of of, of our enemies you know and we can't, you know, there's certain things that we can't do. All right. That's why in the kingdom, we're going to be able to do it. And the Lord going to put the law, statutes and, and commandments in our inward parts. That's the the, uh, the, the new covenant. And ain't going to be one Israelite trying to make excuses for why he can't keep one law. He's going to be keeping every Israelite is going to be keeping all the laws. All right. We're going to be perfect. All right. But. As long as you in the flesh, you're going to continue to make excuses. Let me get that in Apocrypha. Yeah, so Rock 32. In verse 17, it says, A sinful man will not be reproved, but find if an excuse according to his will. And that's what a lot of our people, that's what a lot of them do that. They like to, you know, make excuses because they want to continue to satisfy the flesh and blend in with this world. They love this world. Well, did not uh, Paul said in Romans, the 12th chapter, to conform not to the ways of this world? You know, shaving your beard and, and rocking a baldy. You know, that's that's part of the ways of this world. All right, it's uh, Romans 12 and 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed in renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. If you look up that word conform. The word is Strong's G forty nine sixty four. Sus gematizo. Sus gematizo. Sus gematizo. And it says to conform oneself, i.e., one's mind and character to another's pattern, fashion oneself according to. 
all right to fashion alike i.e conform to the same pattern you go to the etym etymology dictionary so we're not supposed to have the mindset of the ways of our oppressor man the mindset of of, of, of the west you know what's ideal in appearance according to the western way that's not what we're doing we're not you know you're not to uh have a, a clean shaven face if, if you're a man you know a, a bald head if, if you're not naturally balding you're not to have tattoos you're not to have long hair either that's a, that's part of the way of this world too you know jake having long as uh dreads which that's not even our custom you know there's so many niggas everywhere that just you know they all gotta have them, them long ass dreads in their head looking real rusty you know jake with long braids jake you got niggas getting extensions man well paul and paul said it is a shame for a, a man to have long hair that's that's the glory of a woman what you want the glory of a woman for well a part of the, the fashion of this world is for men to be like women so you're you're conforming to this world and don't even realize it uh conform it says uh from the latin conform mary to fashion to form to shape all right so yeah man so we're not to you know shape ourselves according to the way of, of this world all right scriptures say love not the world neither the things that are in the world if you have the love of this of this world the love of the father is not in you okay so you can easily you know stop stop with the bs and stop with the damn excuses you know a lot of jake do it because you know they want to please their master you know their oppressor and also you know they think that you know women are still not every woman like that whole clean shaven shit they 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 prefer a man to have facial hair you know it's more masculine more manly to have hair on your face i don't be to i don't take no no jake serious when he ain't got no hair on his face but uh you know this is just my response you know i'm not gonna make this a, a drawn out video this this don't need to be 40 50 minutes long this is just i just want to respond to this right here all right he, he calls himself responded to the israelites so i'm not sure what camp got on him but uh this is his little reply and this was real weak it was a very weak reply all right god wants our hearts not the beard no god wants you to keep his commandments if you love him keep his commandments that's what he wants you to do so anyway you know i'm gonna end off with that the lord willing this is edifying him give all praise glory and honor to you i was shy to the next lesson shalom